Minister, welcome to the Senate of Canada. Minister, at the Senate Subcommittee on Veterans Affairs, we have been looking at ways how we can create a defined, professional and consistent system for veterans as they leave the Canadian Armed Forces. Basically, what we are looking at, the professional way in which they are able to join the Armed Forces, it should have the same professional way when they leave the Armed Forces. And you know this better than I, I, Iowa will, is that, for example, their assessments are not all in place when they leave. Their pensions are not all in place when they leave. All the services they are entitled to are not in, all in place when they leave. And I've been asking the ombudsman when they appeared in front of our committee, why do we not wait until all this is in place before the soldier is discharged? And from what I understood from him, he said it's an issue of governance. So, Minister, my, my questions to you are, why can't we wait to discharge the person who has served our country with great sacrifice until all the services that he's entitled, he or she is entitled to are in place? And is this an issue of governance? Minister Hare. Senator, great question. And I will say that's exactly why the Prime Minister has named me Associate Minister of National Defense. There's a clear separation between my role and the current Minister of National Defense him and uh, he's busy on certain things around uh, national safety issues, what we're going to do uh, throughout the world and that, and that extent, where my role is specifically to work with him on closing the scene, ensuring we have a smooth release process for people leaving the military. Here's one of the real things I think all of us should know is that 27% of the men and women who leave the Canadian Armed Forces struggle in some way through either lack of appointment, uh, lack of shelter, inability in personal lives getting, getting back on track. And we believe that because uh, of this role of creating me as Associate Minister of National Defence, we can close the seam, professionalize the release service that uh, the Chief of Defence Staff Vance so readily talks about. We do a great job of bringing people into the Army, of uh, getting them into basic training, of deploying them on missions, on sending them abroad, on uh, getting them the training and techniques they need to do uh, great tactical skill work on behalf of the Canadian people. We don't do a good job of releasing them. And it's become incumbent upon us to do it, not only for their benefit, but for our benefit of attracting people to the military. We don't want the Canadian public with the belief that when a person leaves the military, their lives are in disarray as a result of their service. So we're committed to getting this right. We're committed to keeping people in the military longer to allow them to have uh, things lined up with Veterans Affairs Canada, to have things lined up so they have fully all the information about the communities they're going to to better support them in this transition. And that's the work we're doing uh, right now. And our hope is to land this uh, within, the, uh, within the time frame we have uh, as government. But the hard work has been done. It's not easy because we've developed this system over a course of 40, 50 years. And in my department, I have uh, veterans who are 20 years old and some who are 104. And it's a wide variety of services, and the military has done things uh, in this fashion for a long, long time. So this is not as easy as it sounds, but we're working on it, and I believe we will get there.